Okay, now that we've installed the new software, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how to use it. Uh, what we're seeing here is when we've booted it up, we can see again, we're revision or version 5.0, revision 64, uh, which is available and shipped with the product as the operating software for the production unit, as well as being the sales simulator and demo software tool. As you can see here, the product is searching for an IV tool in the corner up of the upper right hand corner indicating it is not attached to unit wirelessly you can also see that it's searching for a soul sensor the irradiance meter that comes with the unit that gives you the information about the sun so both of these units um, with both of these units not being available wirelessly i don't physically have one here with me um, the software is really unusable so what we're going to do is we're going to go under utility and we have simulation mode. We're gonna go ahead and run simulation mode. The first question it's gonna ask you is, it's gonna tell you it's going to have to restart in simulation mode. And when it restarts, the IV unit, the soul sensor will be simulated. It asks you if you want to load a new project. What a customer would typically be doing is they would be creating a project and what a project might be is, um, setting up the information about the array they're going to inspect. So you might have five solar panels connected on a string and you might have three strings, so a total of 15 panels. Uh, you would want to set up the hierarchy of that in the um, in the software so that it knows what it's you're going to be measuring and that would be considered a project file. What this is going to do is create a project file for you automatically. So it's going to do a step that the end user would have to do on their own. It does this because it wants to make sure that it sets up the project to be identical to the signals it's going to be simulating. Uh, we don't want you to have to guess at how we've configured the signals. So this is the way that we made sure that the simulation and the test work perfectly. So if you've never done this before, we'll hit yes. And it's going to open up and want to create a new project file. You can see here I've done this seven times before. So it's iterated simulation project one through seven. It's asking me to add project eight. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And by the way, this is a uh, folder I've created to where I'm going to keep my project files. And you can even see this folder up here, test project is the actual simul is actually results from a simulated test. Uh, so you'll want to pick a place on your hard drive, on your computer that you can keep this data for easy access. So we'll create that. It is going to reboot the software. Now that it's rebooted, you can see we're under simulation project eight in the title here. You can also see in the upper right hand corner, it is blinking simulation mode. Now it's going to go through the standard process as if it was connected or connecting to a, 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 a IV curve tracer, a PV analyzer unit and soul sensor. It gives you the information about um, telling you if you're exposed to more than 1500 volts or 30 amps, you can cause a problem. So we'll click on that. You can see the soul sensor is giving me a radiance information, temperature information, and inclination of the panel information. It's also telling me, if I click here, what the battery level is. This is actually a true response if you were connected to a tool uh, in the office with you. The, uh, one of the other things I wanna talk about is it is going to spoof or basically mimic um, all of these readings as well as the time of day and the uh, time zone in uh, real life the time zone of the computer you're using has to match the time zone of the project you're in so that it can do the calculations of where the sun should be in the sky at that time of day uh, to prevent that from being creating errors and creating mismatches depending on when you were doing this simulation we basically just say it's at uh, 1600 um, or four o'clock every time it takes the measurement and it increments one second every time it takes the measurement. So we don't have to spoof the time zone or spoof uh, the actual time of day anymore. It does it for you. There, uh, now that we're ready to take a picture, if you want to look at the actual site info, you can look up the information here. It's in the Pacific time zone. Um, and we can look at the array navigator we open it up, we can see that the test system, or when we hit yes at that earlier point and it rebooted, it built simulation uh, project eight. 
is one inverter with one combiner box with one harness and I'll get to why that's named uh, sign here later with five strings under that harness so in this simulation there's a total of five strings in that it and that's it in real life there might be multiple harnesses with multiple strings and multiple combiners so exponentially um, growing the number of solar panels you're using to make it simple for everybody we named harness one h1 assign here because this is where you're going to assign the measurement when you take it so the easiest way to look at that so you can walk through with the customer um, or the end user how this would work um, by going in here and showing them a very simple um, array so now that we're ready to go here we want to hit measure now now in real life this would actually be taking voltage and current measurements and you can see here we have a nice smooth representative curve <coughs> the next step would be to open it up and decide where we want to assign these values Well, that's pretty easy we assign it to harness one we hit assign and save and now it's applied the measurement that it took to the information about the project or about the array that the simulator built it added these points here um, it got just under 1200 volts and just under 25 amps you can see we got a 96.8 percent performance and a 77 percent fill rate if we flip over to the table you'll see that 96.8 percent these are all the measured or simulated measurements that it took these are all the predicted measurements this is uh, based on the project that we created with the type of panels those five strings of panels that we uh, inputted in the simulation this is what it predicted we should have seen in a perfect situation and the third column is the measurement the first column translated using standard temperature coefficients meaning perfect temperature perfect time of day um, we all uh, you might know that temp the temperature of the panel itself the tamper the ambient temperature can cause um, you to lose efficiency in a solar and solar panel so uh, the measurements are adjusted using the temperature that the uh, soul sensor captures right here 51.5 degrees celsius and um, makes an adjustment um, for the measurement in a perfect environment all of those uh, three combined give us the calculation of the 96.8 percent efficiency so this is an example of what good looks like you'll also notice that we are on a uh, a set date and a set time um, so we're going to get that every single time now if I want to see possibly what something bad would look like I'm going to hit measure now again now we can see we don't have a smooth curve it's going to go to the same place we hit assign and save again it's going to give me a warning that I've hit some thresholds I'm below 85 percent which uh, it has a target range of 90 to 110 I'm below a fill factor of 0.7 and the measured P max is not within the range of 90 to 100 percent of the predicted P max so it's giving you a warning that says hey something is wrong here and indeed something would be wrong here this is the best way to put this as an example of what a faulty panel or a faulty string might indicate a full chunk of this fill area is missing uh, this the quickest way to look and or probably the best troubleshooting piece after this would be to go out with a thermal imager and look for if you can find a panel with an anomaly on it but this is uh, this is very indicative of a bad panel you can see we got 85 percent performance here 64 percent fill rate you can see once again the measure predicted and measurement with translated to standard temperature coefficients listed here uh, this is an example of what bad looks like what a warranty or a faulty system would look like or a at least evidence of a faulty system would look like so now we're going to go to the third and final measurement that the simulator makes by hitting the measurement now and now we have once again not a smooth curve but not a giant missing chunk like we had before we're going to once again hit uh, highlight the harness assign here measure and save we're going to get the same error messages that we got in the past but we also get an amperage me measurement because the voltage and the amperage were not within 
um, the spec that we would have expected. Now you can see here there's not a giant chunk missing, but it's just you can see multiple levels of that are all added up. Uh, this would be the combination of not just one string or one panel being faulty, but multiple strings or multiple panels uh, being fault not faulty, but not giving the proper amount of um, energy or uh, voltage and current return. Um, in this case, uh, we can come here and see the differences between the measure predicted and uh, the measurement translated to the standard temperature coefficient, but we're getting about a 74.3% efficiency built here. Uh, what this is indicative of is shading, dirt, bird droppings, something in on the panels that's making them inefficient. So this might be the best real world example of uh, you need to wash your solar panels or you need you have a situation where you're having shade um, maybe the other panels or something in the area is shading uh, the tools or possibly uh, took this on a day that you had some cloud cover and it's not giving the proper amount of energy back but uh, this is something that might be more of operational um, or uh, just some uh, routine maintenance rather than a warranty or uh, a faulty piece of equipment. Now if I hit measure now again, there's three measurements, it goes back to the original. So you get, um, you basically cycle through those three over and over again every time you hit measure now, which is a good measurement, a faulty panel, and then um, uh, an inefficient array of panels. If you hit the recall button, you'll notice the three um, I saved are here. It's going to save the last measurement you took. So if you stop, the last measurement you save is the one with the inefficient panel, the dirty panels. That's the one it's going to save um, if you decide to export the measurements. But you can come back in here. Uh, it's also why if you had done this simulation before and at the very beginning of this video, uh, when it asked if you wanted to create a new project file, if we'd hit no, you could have opened an old project file and gone back and seen other measurements. So there you have an option there. Um, furthermore, uh, if you want to do an analysis with the external uh, DAT anal uh, analysis file, at this point you could come in and trace, uh, export the trace for this active measurement or the entire system. In this case, there's only one active measurement on this system, so uh, effectively you're getting the same thing. Uh, in this case, a DAT file demonstration isn't necessary because we only have one string we're measuring and the DAT file is really only good um, when you're measuring multiple strings and looking for um, any kind of inconsistencies across different measurements. Uh, you can get most of the information you need right here from uh, the table. You, and, and also, if you hit the history tab, you can actually go in and see all the historical uh, measurements that have been taken. So. I hope this helps you out. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me, uh, Aaron Woody, or any of the other uh, Fluke sellers uh, or tech support uh, for information about this. Uh, and once again, if you're using this in simulation mode, we're still blinking here, and you wanna go back to uh, regular mode, it is simple as exiting out of the software and rebooting it again. And you're starting back into the software. And once again, this is the same software that all end users will use. This will be shipped with the product. This will be available on fluke.com in the coming weeks. So this software is um, perfectly, we're perfectly able to send this out to anybody that would like to take a look at it, as well as show them how to use the simulator. Um, we won't have um, a really deep manual about the simulator because it's intended for um, more for Fluke to help convey the value to people rather than a real application in the field at this time. But um, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to Fluke and we'll get to, we'll get you taken care of. So appreciate it. Thank you very much.